Hello and welcome to It's Only Electric. I'm sitting inside the ID bus, a great car, but today's episode is not a general review. This is a video about camping or sleeping inside your ID bus. I'm going to show you and walk through the, all the details about how to set the system, how to simulate the camp mode or utility mode that doesn't exist. I'm also going to show you details about the bed size, the possible sleeping area you get when you fold the back seats, etc. But we still have a bit to go before we arrive at our destination, so I will report back soon. So we have arrived at our destination. So this is the campsite. I have straightened up the car so it's standing on a flat surface because you don't want to sleep on a surface that's not flat. That's a bad idea. Our packings. And this is the mattress. So it is a air mattress. That's what we had, 22 centimeters thick. 191 centimeters long and 137 centimeters wide. It's a bit too wide because the measurement in the most narrow place is 120 centimeters and the depth is 216 centimeters. So you can fit an even longer bed. And I think air mattress is not the best solution, but I mean, hey, they look really happy. So I hope that I will look the same tomorrow morning. So let's start by preparing the bed and fold the seats. And maybe remove this one. So this one uh, fits in front of the rear seats. So I put it on the floor there and fold the seats. So that's the surface and uh, you may wonder why I am driving around with uh, stones in the boot. I think and I hope that this is the trick for keeping the AC going the whole night. But let's see, I'm gonna show you more soon. First off, start to prepare the sleeping area and later adjust the system for the night and also place out the stones for having the climate system running. So now it's filled with air. I think it works good. It's a bit narrow since this is wider than the interior of the, of the boot, but it still works good since it's filled with air. It's placed as forward as possible. So it still has a good amount of support all the way into the front. And you clearly see here that you have approximately at least 10 or 15 centimeters of extra space. So you can have a mattress that's at least two meters. So a bit longer than this one without any problem. So now the bed is ready. This is what it looks like. It looks cozy, doesn't it? One disappointing thing is that you lose a lot of height. This shelf here to make everything straight and aligned is very highly placed. That's because of the back bench. When you fold it, it's on this level. So it means that you can't use the whole height of of the car a bit disappointing because it will be hard to sit straight on this position maybe a thinner mattress would have helped but this is what i have so let's try after this it's time to prepare the software so turn off the alarm for instance and also adjust the climate controls and the front seat to be able to get the ac running the whole night so tonight is going to be six or seven degrees Celsius as coldest. So we need to have the heater running during the night. Maybe not the whole night, but I will still try to get it to work during the whole night. So let's do that adjustment. And by the way, I also found a socket, a chuko socket in the front, just underneath the front passenger seat. And that's an extra equipment and good to know. It has an output power of 300 watts as maximum. You can use it for connecting like a TV or uh, I don't know, like a heater or something. So this bus is equipped with tinted windows. That's extra. I think it's called like green heat resistant tinted windows. 
uh, in this case it's really good because I didn't bring any curtains to put inside of the windows to cover the sunlight so I hope that it doesn't get too bright inside of the cabin tomorrow morning let's see it is not time to sleep yet but now I have set up everything to be ready for the night and for the moment I'm actually trying uh, this function <laughs> and this is where my stones come in handy so it's five stones each have a weight at 3.1 kilograms so it's 15.5 kilograms under that I have some kind of cover to protect the seat from not getting damaged and I have fastened the seat belt and the car now thinks that someone is sitting in the front seat so the AC is running on very low 21 degrees uh, I have minimized the brightness on the screen and also turned off the interior safety monitoring so the alarm so that's off display brightness is to the lowest also lower the ambient lighting or you can even turn off the ambient lighting if you want that to get as dark as possible and, and consume as little energy as possible so that's all we're all set for sleeping in the car but it is a couple of hours left so this is just the first test and to see how it works uh, I really hope that Volkswagen will add a camp mode soon to their cars. It will be easy. If they don't want to call it camp mode, they can call it utility mode, for instance, as Hyundai does. Yeah, I hope Volkswagen will add it very soon, especially to the ID bus and to the ID4, because it is clearly cars that you can sleep in. And with electric cars, it's a totally different story. It's a very convenient thing to have. and. Uh, and a nice way to experience the nature that's to sleep in the car this is my workaround uh, i have read in some different forums etc on reddit and uh, someone mentioned the weight solution and i had some stones at home so this will probably work let's see i'm gonna keep it running for an hour and see if it turns off or not so the clock is half past 12 and it's time to sleep everything is set up and ready uh, i have tried the stones uh, and they seems to be working uh, without the stones it turns off after 20 minutes but with the stones I have tried and it was on for one and a half hour then I turn it off manually because I don't want it to waste battery so it seems to work with the stones so uh, I hope it will keep me warm during the whole night let's see about that I have set the interior temperature to 21 degrees and it's set to AC manual so the lowest level I think that's enough I have a state of charge at 84 percent and 354 kilometers of range left so let's see how much battery it will consume during the whole night uh, I guess it will be for like seven and a half or seven or eight hours let's see when i wake up so i have this device with me it's a temperature meter uh, so we will we'll measure the temperature close to the boot currently 20.7 degrees in the front seat so that's good hopefully it keeps the same temperature all the way at the back it's uh, let's see it's seven degrees outside so it will most likely be cold if i don't use the HVAC so the HVAC is needed and I guess without the HVAC the air inside the cabin will also be a bit depleted of oxygen so I need it and it's time to sleep half past midnight wish me luck good night good morning uh, this didn't go as expected I accidentally locked myself out whilst taking a leak this night so i was forced to leave the car so it's locked i actually locked it from inside before i went to bed and I closed the door to avoid the mosquitoes to enter the cabin and did not 
keep the car key in my pocket so now I am here locked out from the car and just want to be clear with that it's not car's fault it's it's me um, so I blame it on myself so now I'm actually waiting for the road assistance to open the car for me uh, so I can go home this is the guide for how not to camp and I will summarize it uh, afterwards so the only gear and things I have is actually my tripod but no camera the camera is there my thermometer is on the other side and the house key too um, phone key is in the mid console all my gear even my shoes so no shoes <laughs> and no key so let's hope that the road assistance will be able to open the car and fix this for me so now road assistance is on site <laughs> let's see if this will solve the issue i hope so and i guess so everything is back in order <laughs> the guy from the road assistance opened the front door the driver's door with two air pillows it took like three minutes for him to fix it so he uh, used one pillow here and one at the top inflated them with air pushed in a metal wire a steel wire opened the door latch it took him like literally three minutes without doing any damage at all everything is fine and dandy and the 12 volt battery is still strong nothing strange so i guess i was lucky at the end anyway so i will summarize the whole episode of how not to camp in a id bus so finally back at home this night i had a total sleep of three hours and <laughs> that's my own fault this video was not really what I thought it should be from the beginning. The purpose was to do a proper camping video because I really think that this is a great car to, to camp in. I did a epic fail and I left the key inside the car, went out for taking a leak and closed the door, the back door, not to let in too many mosquitoes. After that, I realized that now I may have locked myself out and that was the case because when I was getting ready for, for uh, the night sleep, I pressed the lock button here at the front. Uh, so it locked all the doors, but, but I didn't know that it didn't unlock all the doors. And I'm usually used to that the car opens itself or unlocks itself or unlocks all doors when you open one of them. And that should be enough, but not in this case. Maybe it could be because of the ignition was on. I blame myself I don't blame the car I did get a little bit of a panic it was like half past one in the night really dark outside so I couldn't even film it because I only had my phone and no good image in that darkness I tried to use voice commands by screaming through the window it didn't work out it didn't hear me and then I tried voice commands by calling my own phone from another phone because my phone was connected via Bluetooth to the car's entertainment system. So it played my voice inside the car, but I couldn't find any voice command that actually operates doors, windows or the boot. I think that's because of security reasons. So you can't open the windows or the doors. So that didn't work out well. Then I called the... Uh, uh, road assistance in the middle of the night and he told me that like you really need my help now uh, I, I was clever enough to have a couple of hours of sleep and then call him again back in the morning so he arrived like one and a half hour after that just a couple of minutes I unlocked the car so I could enter it and grab grab the key and everything was fine and dandy the 12 volt battery was strong no problems whatsoever it hasn't uh, leached any battery capacity from the big battery either it was at 82 percent when i entered it the, the morning after so 
that's good nothing strange it didn't work out as i planned sometimes if you don't use your brain you need to use your time or other things that's not that convenient so lessons learned the first one always bring your key and have it in your pocket if you sleep alone so if you leave the car always bring your key otherwise you risk locking yourself out the second lessons learned is that working with departure times for preconditioning is probably a better solution and the solution i would have gone for if i knew that before trying this scenario out this was a bit too fiddly to work with the stones and the exact placing of them it's not that easy it's not only about weight you can just put 15 kilograms on it and hope for the best because it will probably shut down after 20 minutes anyway you need to place them the exact right way to get the sensors to trigger so i really don't recommend this way of doing it and it also keeps the daylight running lights on so it draws some energy and also possibly disturbs uh, neighbors or others in the same area so i would avoid that solution point number three is this is the perfect car in all aspects but one when it comes to camping and sleeping in the car and that's of course the lack of camp mode or utility mode i really hope that this will be a feature released very soon from volkswagen because it, I mean, it would be a waste otherwise. This is a great car for doing this. And uh, I really love it and hope they will fix the software functionality for this very soon. The last point on my lessons learned list is use a mattress that isn't too thick. Mine was an air inflated one that was 22 centimeters high. It was a bit too high. Much better with like something that's below 10 centimeters in thickness and use the dimensions of 120 and 200 centimeters then you will maximize the sleep area and get very good support on all points on the mattress so i i think that's all i'm done with the camping and sleeping in the id bus for the moment i hope at least uh, you enjoyed the video and that you got some good information out of it so don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as usual always stay electric thank you for watching Speak to you soon.